that I am very sorry and I apologize for the inconvenience of me not giving up. Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video in which we have the pleasure of talking about a free-to-play event, aka the Lozat Sherman Swan. But before we start off that video, I just want to show you something. This morning, I saw that Wargaming added back the Containers Collection bundle into the shop. And before we start off the video talking about the Loza, I know it seems quite juicy as an offer because you see all those juicy tanks everybody wants to get. Those are rare and extremely effective tanks on the battlefield. Yes, but they are extremely hard to get. And one common mistake everybody does because it seems like everybody stopped math at 4 grade is that you don't stack up those chances. For example, if you have two containers collection, one for the 30B and one for the FV 215B Badger, your total chances of getting a tank is not 3.5 plus 2.5, so a total of 6%. No, that's not how it works. The maximum chance you can get is for the Badger 3.5. You do not stack up percentage Okay? Don't do it. So it's not worth it. You're gonna spend your gold uh, completely for nothing here. And the same if you wanna buy it with Euro. So no, 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 it's not worth it. And I don't want you to buy it. Please guys, keep your gold for some kind of a juicy offer that should come around the corner pretty soon. Now, let's talk about the Lowe's of Sherman, don't we? I'm not gonna do a traditional review of the tank. I'm just gonna talk about the overall statistics. When we take a look at the gun, it's extremely an extremely effective gun for its tier, so you shouldn't struggle too much. The mobility is average uh, for a medium, so it's still better than a regular heavy. You will be able to find yourself in aggressive positions, but not as fast as, for example, either light tanks or mediums featuring a better engine at the same tier. And for the whole armor profile, you are a huge weak spot by yourself, except the gun mantlet, which will be able to bounce some shells. Now let's not lose too much time and talk a little bit about the event itself. Now guys, concerning the event itself, it's quite simple. You need to gather parts of the tank, if I'm not mistaken, it's 215. And once you gather all those parts, you will be able to exchange them for a certificate that, when activated, will give you the Loza Sherman. But before we talk about that, how do we receive those parts of certificate? As you can see, it seems like it's a skill-based event. Look at this. If you have a third class, you will get a certain number of parts for the certificate. You will have more if you do a second class, more if you do a first class, and more if you do an ace tanker. This is basically the same mechanisms as the one Wargaming used in the E75 TS event. So nothing really hard to understand, but let's do some math. To understand the certificate parts, Blitzpost did the math. By the way, you should definitely join the Discord server, it's extremely worth it and full of juicy leaks. So, it seems like when you do a third mastery page, you will be able to unlock two parts for the Loza certificate. If you do a second class, it's three. If you do a first class, it's four. If you do an ace tanker, it's five. So it's easy for us to calculate how many battles you will need depending on your skill. Basically, if you do only third mastery page, page sorry, you will need 108 battles to unlock the tank. If you only do second mastery page, you will need 72, first class 54, and ace tanker 43. Obviously, not a single player in this game is gonna do 43 masters in a row, therefore, it will depend. But let's say for a skilled player, you will possibly need like 80 battles to unlock the Loza, and if you're an average player, you will need probably around 108, something like this. Now, one thing that is extremely important for you to notice, in order for you to unlock those parts, you need to play tier 5 or higher. It's not an event that is made for new players that are still locked at uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 or tier 4. You need to play at least tier 5 tanks to get those mastery pages in your garage for you to unlock those parts. Now, let's go back to the main subject. One last thing I forgot to talk about before we jump into the replay, guys. Uh, this is basically how it works for you to unlock, for those of you who did not understand how the certificate parts are working. And also, you will be able to buy directly those parts for the price indicated right there as soon as the event is over, just in case you missed some parts to be able to unlock your Shloza Sherman. Concerning the playstyle, guys, it's quite simple. You gotta understand two things. You have a good mobility, which will allow you to take advanced position, 
and you also have 10 degrees of gun depression, which makes that tank perfect to work from rich lines, etc. But also, you have a poor armor, even your gun mantlet is gonna struggle bouncing most of the time, and you're gonna see that not in this replay, but on the upcoming one right after this one. But basically, what you wanna do is peekaboo from an all down position. What does it mean? It means that you take a position from which you can show your turret only, you go around the corner, for example, you poke your shot, and you go back as soon as possible to a safe cover from which nobody can shoot you. Because you don't have any armor, and because thanks to your amazing gun dispersion that is around around 0.29, it will be more than enough for you to actually hit your target and not miss or bounce or anything like that. Now, why would you want to get the Loza Sherman? Because overall, it's a nice tank, but not an overpowered one. So why should you bother getting that tank? Let me explain to you briefly. It's not necessarily on the statistics that this tank is interesting. It's on the credit coefficient, because the Loza Sherman is one of the few tier six in this game that has the tier eight credit coefficient, the tier eight premium, which means that with this tank, if you manage to get like 1.5 or 1.6, maybe 1.7K damage, you will climb up in terms of credits because you will end up with a game at more than 40,000 credits. Obviously, to do that, you need to lower down the number of golds you're gonna shoot, but if you don't shoot gold and you manage to get yourself 1.7k damage, which is quite easy to get at tier 6, then yes, you will do a lot of credits. And it can be a good alternative for people that don't feel comfortable playing at tier 8 because they are not experienced enough or, or even they don't like the tier 8 matchmaking because that's possible as now we have more premiums than regular tech 3 tank at this tier. But basically, yeah, this is a mighty tank in order for you to gain a lot of credits. And I think it's really generous from Wargaming to actually implement that tank in a free-to-play event. Obviously, you have to play a lot because you have one week, if I'm not mistaken, to unlock the tank, but one week to play 100 battles if you don't have a job, because let's be honest, most of the people playing that game don't have a job uh, because it's students or young people, etc. But if you don't have a job, I feel like it's easy to get it. Obviously, if you're a skilled player. Now, one thing I forgot to talk about, maybe concerning that tank, is the Loza itself. What was this tank designed for? It's basically an M4A3 E8 premium, and as it has the premium status, Wargaming will never nerf it. Maybe buff it in the future, that's possible, but they will never nerf it, which is kind of a guaranteed for you that if you unlock that tank, it's not gonna change on its statistics, except if it's to make it better, which can be a good thing. Now let's talk about the tank when you're bottom tier, like it's my case right there. As you can see, I'm trying to find an all down position. And as I told you, here I bounce the Hellcat. Because the only way for you to bounce something on this tank is taking the shot, as you can see, straight into your gun mantlet. If you don't take it here, it's gonna be impossible for you to bounce anything. I bounced it a second time here because it went straight into my gun mantlet. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, we didn't see it, we saw it for like a couple of seconds, but not that much. And as you can see, I'm using my 10 degrees of gun depression from the reach line there. And that's exactly what you intend to do with the Lowe's German. You gotta play this way. If you don't, congratulations, you're gonna get completely destroyed. So overall, that's the playstyle you get acquire with that tank. All down, you use your 10 degrees of gun depression, not showing too much. And that's not necessarily a tank you wanna push with. Uh, I wanna highlight that. When you have a tank that doesn't have any armor, it doesn't seem like the brightest idea ever to rush through the enemy lines. So you gotta stick with the rest of your team. You need support for that tank to be effective. Because if enemies are pushing you, I can guarantee you 100% sure that they will not bounce. Now, one thing uh, about the tank and one thing about the playstyle in general, make sure if you try to poke around a corner or something that you don't have in front of you either a tank destroyer at tier 6 or above or any tier 7 because you can bounce shells in your gun mantlet as long as they are coming from tier 5 and tier 6 that are not tank destroyer because of the penetration. But when it comes to tier 7, you are gonna get completely crushed, so don't try it. And I'm gonna try to highlight that against the Hellcat right now. Look at the first shot the Hellcat uh, sneaked here. I took it straight into the gun mantlet, but I don't know why I can't see it. That's terrifying, why I can't see it? Okay, I can't see it, but I took it in the gun mantlet, and as you saw, it penetrated. Second one, I took it again in the gun mantlet, and it penetrated a second time, and oh, 
third time. Third time. And as you can see here, you, you saw, I took them all in the gun mantlet and they penetrated. As I told you with this tank, you don't have any armor, only the gun mantlet that can be effective against tier 5 and tier 6. Now we only have to deal with the rest of our gun depression. And as you can see, gun mantlet, when it's not coming from a tier 6 or a t no, when it's not coming from a tier 6 tank destroyer, it works effectively. Now we only have to finish the rest of the opponents. We killed the ARL 44 and now we're going to try to get the KV-1S. I wanted to go above him using my gun depression, but I feel like this guy really wanted to kill me. So as he wants to, I'm just going to avoid him. There we go for a small side scrape because the guy is uh, not the brightest player ever. We sneak our shot, getting four kills nearly 1.9k damage and it's over for us and you're gonna see the battle results same as the previous one we did a couple of credits here obviously i did less uh, which is logic because i played with a lot of apcr so gold shell that i missed but overall yeah this is a pretty good tank that you want to acquire in your garage especially if you want to make some credits if you enjoyed that video and learned something feel free to subscribe like and share and i'm gonna see you soon for a new one bye